Good morning. So, I don't know. Look at this. I'm playing with this thing this morning. I'm playing with this because I'm like, it's bright, it's happy, and I'm talking about happiness in relationships this morning. So I thought, you know, I'm going to give myself a little headdress and just be playful and have a little bit of fun and see what the heck this thing does. So here we are. Happiness in <laughs> and relationships. Your happiness in relationships. And, you know, it's interesting. As I was waking up quite literally, I was laying in bed. My eyes were closed. And I was I was doing my gratitudes. What well, was just kind of come, coming through. These gratitudes were coming through. And, and I'm right in the middle of, like, really getting into my gratitudes when this, the, the title of this morning's talk comes through. And it just is like happiness in relationships uh, and it's kind of like you could it was kind of like you know um, the narrator in a movie right and the narrator comes in and just makes this statement so I felt like I was getting narrated to for a brief moment which I actually sometimes feel that way like my life is getting narrated I'm like who's narrating this thing um, but yeah so the, the narrator for this morning came through and said, happiness, your happiness in relationships. I thought that's just, okay, fine. Not typically something that I'm going to like title for conscious coffee, but we can do that. We can do that. So I came down the stairs in the jet black and let my dogs to, out back to go to the bathroom while I went and poured my coffee and made it over here to decide um, what we're talking about when it comes to happiness and relationships. But what was really coming through and still is, is, oh look at that, I take a sip of my coffee and my, and my hair thing goes away. Interesting. Oh god, I can't drink coffee with flowers on my head. That's not going to make me very happy. Um, happiness in relationships though. Or your happiness in relationships, however the hell I titled that this morning. What was coming through was the concept that in order to be happy, one must be in a relationship with somebody. You know, and and I see this over and over again when I'm working with people, no matter what I'm working with them on is like they come to me whether it is for purpose or for you know just figuring out life shit or maybe it's something dealing with their intimate relationship maybe they've had a breakup maybe their relationship's not going so great maybe they're just wanting to find find peace in their life whatever that might be one of the biggest issues that I see that us humans have is that we believe that in order for us to be happy in life, we must be in a relationship. And good morning, Addison. Morning, Amy. So to believe that we are the only the only way to really truly be happy in life is to be in relationship with somebody else. And let me tell you, that right there is one of the worst beliefs that you can have. If you and to believe that you have to be actually connected to another human being at that level of you know like you have to be dating you have to be married you have to be living with somebody you have to be you know all this stuff in order to find your happiness in order to be happy this is the path to happiness no 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 and this morning, I'm going to throw my ex-husband under the bus because he's a prime example of of this one particular piece of this. And um, so, and, and he would admit, I know that if he was watching this or if he ever does, he would probably be like, yep, Kendall, that's exactly right. You know, I have this issue right here because for years, he, even when we were together, so married for 20 years, right? And one of his biggest issues in life, and, and still is today that I know, is this feeling of loneliness. This feeling of that there just has to be something more. And I believe that, you know, like one of the biggest things that after when, when we broke up, when we separated, 
some of the statements made were about, you know, why, how can you leave me now, now in my darkest time, now when I really need support, now when I really blah, 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 blah. Our life was no different when I left him than it had been for like five, six years consistently, and we had ups and downs of it. I just got sick and tired of it and decided that I needed to go and make my own stand in life and just take care of me and the kids. So that's what I did. So it wasn't like he was you know, had cancer and, and, you know, all this bad stuff happened. And then I'm like, okay, well, goodbye. No, what happened was that he, we just, it, it, our relationship served its purpose. It served its term and it was time to move on. But his comeback was, how can you leave me now in my darkest hour? How can you leave me now? I can't, I, I don't want to be alone. What am I going to do? I don't want to be alone. Um, and I would always, so my personality is one that I get into the car, if the music, if the radio is on, I turn the music off and I like silence. When I do have the rare opportunity of being at home alone with no children, no, no, no man in the house, you know, like I am the only one, me and the dogs, then there's no TV on, there's no radio on, I'm not plugging a headset in to listen to music, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm like, oh wow, an opportunity to be by myself and to just really get into this space of self and do some connection work. So like that's where I go, like I go into that space of like, yay, I get to experience me, I get to connect to me. And I look for those moments of connection in the day, trying to create that space to have the moment for me and that relationship to me. Where, since I'm throwing my ex-husband under the bus here this morning, uh, <laughs> under he goes again. And and um, it, it really is that what he used to always make the statement of was he's like, I like he would have the music always playing or the TV would always be on. And he, I would say, you know, when we were together, I'd be like, hey, honey, why, why can't we just have like some silence? Or don't you just want to like sit in some silence a little bit because the kids are gone. This is happening. That's happening. He'd be like, oh my God, no. You know, like he just could not be by himself. And to the point that he still is, he's never been by himself even though if you asked him, he would say, no, I am always by myself. She's the one who's never by herself because she's the one who has the kids. She's the one who has all these people in her life. So she's, she doesn't even know what alone is like. And that is true that I don't know what alone is like in a big scope because I have so many freaking amazing people in my life. But I am a firm believer that I have these people in my life because they know where I stand and because I can be right there in myself and be perfectly fine being by myself. I'm not, I'm not attaching and trying to connect and constantly in a needy fashion. When I make, when I reach out and connect to somebody, I'm actually reaching out and connecting to that person because I'm really wanting to connect to that person for that moment or something that is going on in their lives. It's not a, I need you. It's an, I want you. So there's a big, big difference in those two, um, where a lot of the time what I see much like with my ex is this, this, um, need versus want. So to be in relationship with somebody, we often get into relationship based on need and typically that is a need of I can't be alone I need somebody here with me so I can't be alone right so we do that instead of I want to spend time with this person I want to do this you know so that is more driven from a place of pleasure than a place of scarcity and that's really what I'm what I'm talking about here is is to live life in this where you are living life according to your pleasure instead of according to your scarcity. Does that make any sense? I hope it does because it's kind of like one of those, I know it's kind of tough to actually think about it or probably admit it that you might be guilty of this. I mean, we all do it in different areas. Today I'm picking on relationship though. And the, the biggest point that I really want to come up with with 
way for this conscious coffee is, you know, if we're living from a state of pleasure, if we're living from a state of wholeness, and we're just happy on the inside, then who wouldn't want to be around us, right? Like, I know I have all these people around me all the time, to, sometimes to the point that I'm just like, I really, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm searching for space because I have so many people in my life. And legitimately, I love everybody in my life and want to spend time with people. And then I ran into the time issue, which I'm working on manifesting the time thing, but that's all it seems, I don't know, for whatever reason, in my mind, that seems a little bit harder, which is exactly why I, <laughs> I'm working on it, because I'm still, oh, what was that? Shit just fell off my head. What was that? <laughs> okay, that was interesting. That was like my cue of like, see, what was I talking about? The hard, how difficult it is for me to manifest, manifest something, and how I'm thinking about it, and then that stuff fell down, so I need to release those thoughts. I think that was Facebook telling me that I need to release those thoughts that are hindering me to having more time. There you go. At least that's how I'm going to translate it. I'm going to translate it like that. And that's what I'm going to go with. Like that's going to like, after I get off conch coffee, I'm going to be writing in my journal. And one of the things I write in my journal is that I always have the time for the important things. And I always have more time, more, more than enough time in my day to do everything that I need and want. So that was interesting. I'm like, I did not see that one coming. Um, <laughs> I just thought that I was going to have like these pretty little flowers on my head. Never did I think they would actually fall apart on me. Ah. Um, so yeah, so back to relationship and happiness, really looking in on, on our relationships. What you're going to see is that, and maybe it's not, I am picking on like intimate relationship here, but this particular challenge can come up in any relationship. It, it most certainly comes up in our friendships. It can come up with, you know, like, um, with our parents, the, the child who can't let go of the parent. And it's not because we love the parent, but because we're scared to exist without that role in our life, without that person who is somehow leading, guiding us. So let's say they pass or, or, you know, like maybe our, let's, we'll take on, we'll pick on mothers here. Like maybe our mother, um, had divorced or is widowed from our father and and then she moves on and she gets married to somebody else but as a grown child we had always had this deep connection to her like we see her all the time I know that there's lots of people out there who who like are always trying to reach out and connect to their parents or vice versa the parent consistently connecting to the child and that is not from even a state of of um, love, but it comes from a state of need where the parent or the child, whoever is doing the the call out, the reach out constantly is, is going after that other person because of how that person makes them feel. And it's not about making them feel good necessarily, but it's fulfilling some peace in their being that they don't know how to get without that attachment to the other person. And, you know, and typically what that's doing to the, to the person who is being attached to, and you're going to know if this is true or not, because we all have probably somebody in our life that does this, but in this, if, whether it is parent, child, spouse, friend, or other, um, if you in your relationship feel like the person who is attaching is draining you. So if you're feeling like, or you're feeling almost dread about going and seeing this person, even though you love them and you feel like, oh, I should go see them. Oh, look, see more flowers falling. Um, <laughs> but, or, you know, you're feeling like I should do this or the word, if that changes to I, I need to do this, you need to go, is that true? Is that true? Should I do that? Is that true? Sh do I really need to do that? Because if the next thing out of your being is a feeling of, uh, or, uh, you know, like this, uh, this is dropping, like you're just getting 
a piece of your life stolen in that moment, you could say, then that means that the relationship that you're operating with is not a relationship based on love. It is a relationship based on need and guilt, need and guilt. And, you know, here you go. I mean, how is that going to make you happy? If you're living, trying to fulfill somebody else's needs to make them happy and it's causing you guilt and shame, then you're not living true to, to your happiness. You're not living true to you. And, you know, yeah, there's lots of reasons and excuses and things that we can come up with here. Like I myself can see, you know, I have a relationship in my life like that and where I, where I literally get drained just at the thought of going into the relationship. And unfortunately it is my mother. My mother has been extremely one of those attached people, codependent people, um, that really pulls that energy from me. And now that she has dementia and she's extremely forgetful, um, and also very moody, it is, it's on steroids basically. So it is even more so on steroids. And then guess what's also on steroids with that is that my guilt factor is on steroids because now I'm feeling extra guilty that I don't want to go and spend, you know, five hours a day with her every single day or at least three times a week. She would love it if she could just move in with me, but I would just cease to exist probably because she would have me drained by the end of the week. I'd just be like, you know, this like limp, um, energetic and energy less body laying on the floor and just go like that, you know. Um, but those kinds of relationships really truly you have to tap into those and get right with those because on your path to finding happiness, on your path to creating that fuck yes life, on your path to, you know, having that freedom based way of being and that what that really means what is freedom based you might say well what does freedom based mean freedom based means to live according to what your true heart wants and giving yourself permission to be you to live as you want to live and as the person that you are showing up how you want to show up in any given moment that's what true freedom is freedom is really just a decision in your mind that you're going to be free and that you're going to live accordingly. So, um, you know, that's getting to those points. If you're consistently giving yourself away to make others happy and have this feeling of guilt, control, shame, all these different things come up inside of you, how free are you, right? How free are you? How, how on purpose are you? How happy can you truly be? How much are you really truly living from your true heart space, from your soul soul's space, if, if you are consistently giving yourself away? If you're consistently giving yourself away and not because you want to give yourself away, but because you feel that it is your responsibility, duty, um, to to make this other person happy or other people happy or whatever. I mean, some of us have multiple, multiple relationships like this and, and we're just drained and fatigued and all this different stuff. And I can tell you that take it from somebody who's had multiple relations operating at the same time like that in years past, it's not a fun space to be. You do not have the energy. You do not know who you are in those moments. It makes it very hard to get attached to who you are, to figure your shit out, and to get into alignment with anything. And, and the ability to, for you to be able to manifest and create that life that you want, it's a lot harder when you're constantly getting drained than when you just take back your your energy and claim your life in that moment. And that really, I mean, you have to look at it like that. You have to look at it like, I'm claiming my life right now because your life depends on it. Are you giving your life away to somebody else? Whether they are alive or not is actually beside the point because I see people giving their lives away to dead people all the time. And that is really, really sad in my opinion because it's like this person's no longer even bl blessing you in their physical presence and you're still getting the energy drain from them because you're still giving yourself over to all this different stuff. And that right there 
is most certainly not beneficial to to your healing, to your mourning, to to that finding of self, and to really tap in to your own personal strength and love and compassion and forgiveness because you you're not focused on you. And I believe in selfishness. Selfishness is a very key point to the healing process. It is a key point to finding love. It is a key point to to um, personal empowerment of any kind. And it is most certainly a key point to creating your fuckiest life. So you got to get selfish. And what I mean by getting selfish is what I'm talking about right here. And that means to put yourself first energetically, emotionally, physically even, you know, you have to get to that point of thinking, uh, like, like you think you're on an airplane. Okay. And the, the stewardess, she's, she's going to go and she's going to put the mask on her face and she's going to say, the masks are going to drop down. You put it on your face first. Even if you have a baby sitting next to you, even if you have a, a handicapped person sitting next to you, even if you have somebody that needs your help, does not, does not matter the mask on yourself first so that you don't pass out because as if you pass out then then that person's not going to get helped okay so you got to take care of you make sure that you have the oxygen and then you can help others get their own oxygen and you can only help them get their own you can only lead a horse to water you can't make it drink right and that is exactly the same case in love in energy in, you know, and in, in all these different things. But what happens is that we actually believe that in order, like the, the title of Conscious Coffee this morning, that in order to have happiness in life, we must be in relationship. And what we miss is that the only relationship out of our relationship with source, with God, is the relationship with self. If we don't have, if we sacrifice the relationship with self for relationship with others, then we're never going to, we're never going to truly move ourselves into a more dynamic, more allowing space to receive everything that we want. And that includes that happiness because ultimately what I've seen over the course of my lifetime is that, you know, we're, we're, we're all striving. I've never met a human being that's not striving for these two things. And those two things are connection and happiness. I've never met a human being that does not do the things that they do, no matter how good or bad they might seem, that's not looking for connection and happiness. So if those are the two primary things that all human beings are striving for, guess what those are? Those are feelings. They are feelings inside of us. They have nothing to do with our outside picture. And because they have nothing to do with our outside picture, that means that the only thing that ever matters is our inside game. That is it. It is just our inside game. So we have to get really right and get selfish and stop giving our power over to, to other people, whether they are, like I said, physically here or not. So if you're giving your energy, your power, your love, your attention over and you're just feeling drained and you're feeling this and you're feeling that, maybe you can't get out of a state of depression because, because you're constantly thinking about how could I help this person? What could I have done? How could I blah, 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 or that person really needs me or this happened in this relationship and you're just like, oh, or maybe you're feeling like, oh, if that person hadn't hadn't done this to me, hadn't said this to me, hadn't broke my heart, hadn't blah, 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 blah. I know how hard heartbreak can be. I really, really do. But turning your power over to any of that is just doing that. It is giving that other person your energy, your, your reins on life and not taking it for yourself and living your life. Okay. So to really just bring it back to you. So message of this morning is most definitely get selfish, get selfish. Stop giving your energy away. It's fucking crazy to give your energy away. Just don't do it. Like set up some good boundaries, get serious about it. And really, truly, seriously, get in there and start looking at like, where am I? What, what do my relationships say about me? Right? Like, so am I a person that is 
relating with people based on need or a person that's relating with people based on want. If you want to be in the relationship with somebody, then you're going to want to interact with that person. And here's the thing, even in those relationships that we want, there's need is going to creep in because we're human beings and we do need things and we do tend to want to um, try to get our needs met by others because Sometimes they can, sometimes, you know, they show up, they, they help us, they do these different things so our needs do get met. There's nothing wrong with that. Underneath that need, is that relationship based on want or is it a need-based relationship? And that's what you got to come back to because you're going to have a natural flow of give and take in any relationship, but what you're looking for is what is, what's the foundation point of that relationship? Like what, what's the root say? Because the root's going to give you the answers to so many other things. So really, really, truly look at every single relationship. And, and maybe sometimes you might, you might go, well, I really want that relationship, but you're feeling really drained, right? Well, maybe that other person's not in it for the one, but they're in it for the need and that's causing that drain. So that means that you need to come back to looking at and saying, Maybe I need to set up some boundaries here. Maybe I need to retract a little bit because I'm I'm getting pulled more. More of me is coming out than what is coming back in. And not that you have to completely always be energetically perfect on things because I believe that if you are open and share and give like that unconditionally that the universe God source will will definitely fill you up in multiple ways. It doesn't have to come from the person that you were necessarily sharing with. It'll come in in other ways. But here's the thing. If you're always, 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 always giving, giving, giving to another person with your time and your energy, then what you're going to really have is that you're going to see that that person is basically a gaping hole in your boat. And that's not good. And you just, you know, like you cannot have that constant humongous drain going without, you know, trying to constantly try to fill yourself back up. And if you get too many of those holes in your boat, then it's like, you've got to just get a new boat or, you know, it's like, you've got to, you, the repair work is almost too much for you to handle. And that's where you see people crash and yes, some crashing happens and crashing can be needed and crashing can be a beautiful transformation process. But I do kind of discourage from having too many crashes like this because there's sometimes crashes that you can avoid, right? So we can avoid. So this is defensive relationship driving here. Okay. And that just means that you've got to look and be serious about what's going on in each one of those relationships and really come back to like the question of the day that I want you to like really think about is, is an ask this with any relationship, whether it is here or if it is, you know, not here if it is so if it's a physical relationship here or it's a, a relationship that's from the past because if you're living in relationships from the past you're going to get the same same shit dealt to you okay and that it really just come back to you this question today of are the, is this relationship based on need or based on want and tap into what the relationship makes you feel inside the sensations the body sensations that come up for you as well as the emotions that come up for you because that's going to give you kind of like a lingering a, a feeling in in that lingering um, moment as to what is really going on and here's a little note 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 to make if it makes you feel depressed guilty shameful angry resentful bitter lost um fatigued, frustrated, get my point here. Okay. If it's any of those lower energy feelings that's coming in, or just like even where you're just like, you just resistance there of any kind, then what that is telling you is that that relationship is probably based more into the need category. And now, granted, you might have a really good love relationship that you're still mourning through and that there's still things, but mourning process. So depending on the time frame of the that, it, the gist of a mourning process is typically anywhere from two months to 18 months. Okay. So even if, let's say we lost a person that has been in our life forever after about 18 months, you should be through the majority of the mourning process and you should be able to pick up your bags, your pieces, and be able to move forward in your life. 
So even with a deep love relationship, you should be able to move through things and not be totally caught up in that past relationship. I'm not typically a person that says, you know, like, this is your time frame for mourning. I believe that mourning, you know, much like forgiveness, one day you just wake up and you're good yeah, and, and you can move forward. Well, if it is taking you like all your life to get through something, if you're really stuck, realize that's not a normal mourning process. Somewhere along the line, you decided to plant your stake, set up camp in that mourning process. And now that's your shit to deal with. So it is, how do you pull up your stake and move your camp? Because sedan camp in that is just not going to get you anywhere. It's just going to hinder you and keep you in this space. And then you'd have to ask yourself, how is this space serving me? How is this space serving me? So if that's, if that's something that you needed to hear this morning, because obviously somebody needed to hear it. That's why it just came up because that was like a rabbit moment for me. Like it's totally derailing now, but it really is that you know, just like ask yourself then those questions. How, how is this space serving me? But if on the emotional scale, if you're feeling those negative realize that, that that is, is not, that's going to give you that idea of that. That's more of like a need based relationship, whether it is your need or the other person's need, there's going to be some sort of more negative vibe to that. If the relationship makes you feel pumped up, excited, um, like you're really wanting to share it, you feel good about it, then then chances are you're going more from a want point, okay? Now there is there this middle ground where you might be really pumped up and excited about the relationship, but at the same time, if you think about not being around that person, you go, oh, you're kind of like, no, I, I want, you know, like there's like a sadness, but there's an excitement. So if you're in that middle ground, here's what that's saying. That's saying that you're still in, oh, wait for it. You're still in need. You're still in need. So, um, yeah, so that's like, that's one of those things, because here's the thing. If you are the one needing the other person to that, to that level, you're going to be excited, turned on and wanting to be around that person. You're going to want to connect. But if that, if that person is like, no, for whatever reason, it's going to have that other feeling of like, Ooh. So if you got excited and Ooh, like not feeling good about it, that means that it is based on your needs still. Okay. But if you're just excited and feel light and there's no, like you could take it or leave it no matter what that person says. And you're just like good with, with whatever, because you're good in yourself. Okay. Alignment to self. Then, um, then the relationships are definitely coming from that want perspective. Okay. So, um, there's, there's the thoughts of this morning on, on needs, wants, relationship and how, I mean, yeah, if you think that you have to be in a relationship to find happiness, think again, think again, you do not have to be in a relationship to find happiness at all. And the only happiness that you're ever going to find or look for truly is within yourself. And until you, until you find it, then you're never going to be happy anywhere, plain and simple. So look no further than your own backyard, as Dorothy and Wizard of Oz would say. And that own backyard is right there inside of you. So, all right, guys. I'm going to let you go. I hear that my kids' alarm clocks are going off and nobody is awake. So that means that maybe I should go... Wake him up with a bucket of ice water, you know. I've never done actually I did that like once to my eldest daughter and I felt so horrible doing it. It was so mean, but I do need to go wake kids up and get them off to school because it's basically the last real week of school around here. So I need to make sure they're all moving that direction. Um, I will catch you guys tomorrow morning for another 6 a.m. conscious coffee. I hope that this one was helpful and do me a little bit of favor. Show me a little bit of love. I need you. I need you. And I want you to hit the share button below and share this message for me because Facebook loves seeing shares on the bottom of this. Um, also, yes, if anybody is interested, please 
um, make sure to touch base with me, kendallwilliams.com or tantratransformation.com. Either one of those will bring you to a whole bunch of articles, free, more free stuff. All my courses, the one that definitely pertains to this talk is my Feel Good Now course. And that really can tap in and teach you how to connect to those to those feelings and emotions and what they're saying and how to start to manifest the relationship that you really want in your life and to really get into alignment to self, to God, and to everything so that you can definitely create that fuck yes life that I'm sure that you would love to have, right? Um, goodness, any other, any other points to make? I don't think so. I don't think so. So there you have it. I will, um, I will catch you guys tomorrow, 6am and I will be on later today and probably talking about desire and belief in my little daily vlog. Other than that, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support, all your listening, all that good stuff on here. And like I said, please hit the share button and always remember stop existing and start living. Bye guys. <laughs>